All right, so we are going to go ahead and talk about uh, caveats and ethics today. So um, one thing to keep in mind is that if you have a large sample, so we always talk about you want to have large samples, obviously. Um, it's going to be more representative of your population. However, if you do have a large sample size, if you have a little, little bit um, of small, you know, if the, there's some sort of difference there, this small one, it's going to show up saying that there is a change. However, that may not be um, practically significant. It may just show there's some sort of deviation, but it's not something we're really interested in in real life there. Um, so something to keep in mind, you know, it's good because it's more sensitive to those changes, but we want to make sure that those changes are of a magnitude that we actually care about in terms of real life. And then that's in comparison to our small sample caution. So if you have a small sample, it's going to motivate you to um, want to do with the, want to do it with a bigger sample because if there's a large um, departure, it may not be um, statistically significant, but it may be practically significant. Um, but since you don't have a large enough sample, it's too small, you're not going to be able to figure that out. So you just want to kind of keep in mind that your sample size does affect, you know, what your results are. It affects if your results are going to be either, you know, if they're important to you or not, um, you know, in terms of either statistical or practical significance. And then the last sort of caution we want to keep in mind is multiple testing caution. So it's saying, you know, if you're taking a bunch of different um, significance tests and then you know, you see a change in one of them, you do have to keep in mind that maybe that change isn't because of um, it being practically significant, it may just be that um, it was by chance. That's still possible, especially if you remember the p-value or probability of that happening um, or something more extreme by chance. So, you know, if you do a bunch of multiple tests, you could get a false positive saying that you think there's a, a change when there really isn't a change. So, something to keep in mind there. And then we do have some ethical considerations. So um, informed consent just means we definitely want to make sure that our participants know what they're getting themselves into. Basically, they know what the study is, you know, the purpose of the study, what's going to go on in the study, that they can, you know, stop at any time, um, just so they know what they're participating in so that it's ethical. Uh, we don't want to coerce them. We don't want to bribe them with things that they would need. Um, you know, you can't bribe with food or any type of, like, life necessities. Um, you know, you can bribe, bribe a homeless person with shelter or something like that. And then you do want to, and that's a, to skip to the last bullet and during the volunteering and saying that they're volunteering to do it. You know, we're not forcing them. It's not a requirement. Um, and we're not bribing them. And then also you want to avoid harm. Obviously, um, you know, if you're talking about medicine and one of your treatments is a placebo and the other one is not, you want to make sure that if the person is receiving a placebo, and so they're not receiving the treatment, that they're not going to be harmed because they're not receiving the treatment. Um, basically, that they would stay at baseline, it would be okay if they did, like if it was, you know, something that wasn't harmful to them. Um, but we'll talk about that in one of our examples actually later on. So, a new treatment, this is going to be a review here. So, a new treatment for brain tumors involves placing biodegradable time releasing pouches of a new drug into the cavity created during surgery to remove the tumor. This type of treatment is expected to work better than taking the drug orally since it will deliver the drug straight to the site of the cancer rather than through the blood system where it might harm the healthy parts of the body. To make the best statistical comparison, a study is planned that will use the new procedure on a randomly selected group of patients and place similar pouches without the new, new drug in a control group of patients with the pouches. Um, new, excuse me, surgeon unaware of whether or not it's a double-blind study. Um, all the subjects taking part would have their own full consent. Very good, because we want to make sure we have that. Um, so go ahead and read through these options, A through C, pause the video, and let me know what you guys think the answer would be. So our answer here is actually going to be B, because of the fact that um, there is an ethical consideration here. The people who are getting the sham treatment can be harmed because they need to obviously get treatment for these brain tumors. So if they're receiving the sham treatment, they're not. They could be degrading as we speak, you know, so that's not good. Um, this is not a good uh, research uh, study to do in that case, so that's why the answer is B. Um, C is not true because they don't need to know. Um, that's that's the, the research technique to be blind or double blind, and then um, obviously since B is true, A is not true, it's not the best one we can do. All right, so true or false, um, informed consent is not necessarily if the research clearly benefits the subject. So hopefully this is pretty obvious. Our answer is false here. 
you can never be sure that it that it um, benefits the subject first of all but second of all you know they still need to give their consent you know it doesn't matter because maybe they don't want the benefit you know there's so many different things to take into consideration so bottom line you always need informed consent no matter what um in play period there all right and going back to the same question here um oh, i apologize yeah not that one um and then so for this one the language in an informed consent document should be what so read through a through c let me know what you think the answer is we will review it then pause the video if you're watching it back so our answer here is going to be b we don't want to be in scientific language because then they can't understand it that's why the answer is b that's why a isn't right b is correct because we want to make sure that the person's agreeing to what they think they're agreeing to so obviously they have to be able to understand it in that case and then c avoid giving away what the experiment is about that's not true because in informed consent that's part of it you want to make sure they know what it's about so that's why our answer is going to be b all right, great job. So once again, this review, all the other reviews are gonna be on um, the YouTube channel. Our next group review is gonna be um, for finals. We're still figuring out that schedule there. Um, if you can go ahead and give me your Penn State email in the chat box, that'd be great. Um, any more questions tonight, let me know. If not, you guys are good to go. Thank you for stopping by.